And then yesterday, or actually it was on Friday, we heard this news story about a guy who'd been arrested because he forgot to return a videotape 14 years ago. The videotape, arguably, by the way, what's considered by many people, even at the website RottenTomatoes.com, to be the worst movie of all time. Freddy Got Fingered. We thought there's, there's no way this is real. I mean, there's no way. How could it be real? Looked it up, Googled it, turned out... It is real. And we and we tracked down the guy. We've got we've got the gentleman involved in this news story and we have his attorney on the phone right now. Uh let's start with James Myers. James, can you hear my voice? Oh, hang on. I think I got the wrong pot up. Did I lose you? James, can you hear me? This J- is Adam. I'm here. I think I lost James. James, you there? Huh. Yes, sir. Sorry, I'm here. Oh, I hear you now. Yeah. <laughs> there he is, Sorry James. That. That's okay. What were you doing? Ordering food? I don't know what happened. I just maybe hit a dead spot or something, but uh, we're good. That's right. It happens. No big deal. James James Myers, you are known on the internet as Mad Influence. You're actually a well-known, reputable electronic music DJ and producer. You produce music that gets played at dance clubs. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. And so so obviously your day job is not renting VHS tapes. No, sir. Not at all. <laughs> so, so let's walk through the series of events here. It's 14 years ago. Did Blockbuster still exist at the time? Uh, yeah, I think Blockbuster still existed at the time, yes. And so, um, is that where you got the tape from? No, well, let me just start by saying I don't even remember reading this tape uh, at all, <laughs> or even having it in my possession, first of all. and um, But it was from a mom-and-pop shop uh, locally, um, and I've, it's been closed down now probably as long as Blockbuster. I have no idea. Okay, so it doesn't even exist anymore. So how did the government no. become aware of the fact that you rented a bad movie? Um, I'll let my lawyer answer that one. Okay, hang on. Let's bring him on. This is the gentleman's yeah. voice you're about to hear is Adam Seifer from Seifer Flata Law Firm. Did I say that right? I'm sorry. Yeah, Seifer Flata Law Firm, correct, yep. And uh, where are you based out of? We're based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. All right, Adam, how did you become aware of this news story? The same way we did, I guess? Yeah, I mean, how I became of it was a mutual friend reached out and asked me, uh, you know, if I'd be willing to, you know, help poor James out with the situation. Uh, to answer your question in terms of how the, the, the court system becomes aware of what happened, I mean, basically what happened was uh, this guy who, who claim, you know, claims that he rented the video, you know, that James rented the video, basically took out a warrant against him 14 years ago saying that he failed to return rental property. Uh, didn't sue him in a civil court. He took out a criminal warrant against him for failure to return rental property. So James never knew about it. It never got served. Even though they had his address, it never, for whatever reason, got served. And so then at that point, uh, you know, 14 years down the pike, uh, he gets pulled over for something else. And the the officer's looking in the database. They always check for warrants. And, um, you know, he sees that he has this warrant out there and, and that's been sitting out there for 14 years. How it never got served prior to then is beyond me since James had, you know, court dates for child custody and those kinds of things where they would still, you know, find out about it. Um, but basically that, that that, that's how it way. came down. So I'm sorry. One. So okay. just, I'm James, sorry. James, you were saying you've been to court for other things in the past 14 years and this never got mentioned. Right. Yeah. I uh, went to court to uh, try to obtain split custody of my daughter, which I did win in 2010 and had several court dates. And, you know, I've been in several license checks during that time. and It's never come up ever. All right, so we actually, before we were able to track you down, we have a legal analyst here at KPRC who we bring on all the time. His name is Charles Adams. He got his master's degree in law from Harvard Law. He's a pretty smart dude. And we asked him about this. We're like, is this even constitutional? And he said, no, it's not. It's a blatant overreach of government. There should have been a statute of limitations. And the value of a, of a, DV, of a VHS tape from 14 years ago shouldn't have warranted law enforcement involvement. Um, so here's my question for you, Adam, the lawyer on the phone. Is it possible? That yeah. there are other people whose names were. I mean, it couldn't be that he was just going after this one tape. Is it possible well, he right. gave a list of tapes and uh, not non-returned DVDs and VHS to local law enforcement? And there are other people out there who might be bothered by this. Obviously, yeah. I mean, if you think about the, the amount of manpower it would take. I mean, no, normally, you know, when you work at a video store, I worked at one growing up, and you know, if the guy <laughs> just kept the videotape, he would just charge. He would just charge the guy's credit card and say, "All right, buddy, the tape's yours now. Here's my hundred bucks." <laughs> uh, and of course, the guy, the guy would get pissed because he's like, "The video's not worth a hundred bucks. I'll return it." Um, but you know, this guy, you know, I don't know. I guess it was his business model was to go down and take out warrants and and anger his customers and try to get them criminally charged. 
But, you know, as far as the statute of limitations issue goes, I mean, the, the issue is I don't know what information the, 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 the legal analyst had, but the warrant was taken out back in 2002. So there is no statute of limitations <laughs> issue simply because this thing, you know, the, and I understand the principle, the legal principle behind it, which is if you find out, like James had no idea there was a warrant out, but let's just say that the guy takes out a warrant on him in 2002 and James knows about it. And sure. James says, well, I'm going to go to Co- Costa Rica for two years because there's a two-year statute of limitations. And, you know, when I come back two years later, they can't prosecute me. No, I mean, the, the state has to, you know, the, the, the charges have to be brought within the two-year window. But but if the charges are brought, the, you know, we see it all the time, the, the, the warrants sit in the repository, you know, indefinitely. Um, because the charge has been filed and the victim, quote unquote, gets to have their day in court if the person's ever, you know, if the fugitive is ever brought to justice. All right. James. So I understand that, but it's just how, how it got to this point and how it even started is beyond me. Because, again, most places don't take out a warrant uh, when somebody simply doesn't return a videotape, allegedly. It's absurd. I mean, this is a blatant overreach of government. Too much law enforcement over something that shouldn't even matter. But, James, I do have a question for you. Do do you remember the catchphrase, the very awful catchphrase from that very awful movie? You mean the catchphrase that Tom Green sang to me when he called me in the middle of the night after he heard about it? The one that goes, uh, Daddy, would you like some sausage? <laughs> that's, that's exactly what it was. This is considered yep. not just a bad film, but thought by many people to be the worst movie made during our lifetime. The likes of which it. we haven't seen in years. I think it's great. I just watched it and I laughed the whole time. All right, so so Tom Green <laughs> tracked you down. Yeah, I, um, you know, working in the music industry, um, I, I have a lot of friends and contacts throughout the entertainment industry, and someone just took it upon themselves. My uh, my my good friend Bobby Stork, he uh, reached out to Tom Green, gave him my phone number, and uh, yeah, Tom called me at one thirty in the morning from Australia, and as I said hello, he started singing the "Daddy, Would You Like Some Sausage" song. <laughs> we had a we had a great laugh, man. You know, I had to compose myself; it was so funny. Did you think? Um, did you think you were being pranked? I sincerely apologized. Told me that this was the most bizarre and absurd thing he'd ever heard, and that uh, he was struggling to believe it. And uh, then he proceeded to tell me that everything happens for a reason, and that uh, you know he 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 wanted to keep in touch. So he followed me on Twitter and uh, told me to direct message him any you know with any updates. And he he said he'd help out the best he could uh, financially if, if it came to it. Um, we even heard a rumor that he may even come to court, but n- not sure on that. Oh, How crazy would that be? That would be epic, James. I mean, that would be it incredible. Would. Tom, yes. Tom Green is thought to be kind of a cheesy comedian, but honestly, a very classy dude. I remember yes. he actually right. did an hour long special on testicular cancer on MTV many <laughs> years ago and brought a lot of people's attention to it. And, and in the aftermath of that special that he did, a lot of people had reported that they discovered they had a lump and that they went and got it checked out. Oh, and Tom, wow. Tom Green's ridiculous TV show might have actually saved some people's lives. Wow. Well, and he had he he had testicular cancer, if I remember correctly. Right. Yeah, that was what it was about. He gave his audience on MTV. This is a this is about a decade ago. I think he was still with Drew Barrymore at the time. He gave them exclusive access to you know him going into surgery, him having the operation done, and you know generally it's kind of a young audience MTV. So a lot of people that were watching that might not have been aware of the fact that they could be, you know, they might have something. And apparently a few people survived because of it. So if, wow. so if Tom Green actually did show up at court, I mean, what, what a whole judge would actually prosecute you guys for this? I mean, this is absurd. Well, and besides the fact that, you know, the state just got a big burden. I mean, they've got to prove a lot of stuff. I mean, they got to prove that he, you know, the first of all, that he rented the tape. And my understanding is the company's out of business and they don't have any records of anything anyhow. So they got to prove that, that, you know, then they got to prove that he didn't return it and that it didn't get lost in that, you know, in the shuffle 14 years ago. And on top of it, if they can get over those hurdles, they then got to prove that they, um, that, you know, that, that James intentionally kept it because if he just left it on a shelf somewhere, yeah, he'd be, you know, he, he would owe the value of it, which some would say, obviously, even at, at, in 2002 is probably worthless. Yeah. But, you know, he, he, but it's not a crime, though. And the guy, the guy went the criminal route, which everyone needs to understand here. Uh, he didn't go the civil route. And to, to stick somebody with a crime, um, you know, you got to prove mens rea, you got to prove intent. And in this case, you got to prove it was willful, not just inadvertent. So, so have you guys heard from this guy that owned the, the VHS cause the VHS store? We have not heard from him. My understanding is is that I heard through the grapevine that he runs some sort of adult bookstore or something. I, I don't know, um, and I don't even know I don't even know his name or anything like that. So, uh, I, you know, I could be mistaken, but you know that's that's what I heard. 
All right, Adam, you're taking up a good cause for liberty, at least I think so. As silly as this is, stuff like this is relevant. It's important that we understand that people's rights matter. Adam, if people need a good lawyer over there in North Carolina, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, they can give us a call at 704-512-0606, or they can reach us on our website, www.cforflatolaw.com. S like Sam, E-I-F like Frank, E-R. The word flat, like a flat tire, and then OWlaw.com. Those are the easiest ways to get a hold of us. And uh, James, I have no idea if anyone listening to news radio would even be interested in drum and bass or jungle music, but just in case they are, how do they get a hold of you? How do they check out your stuff? Yeah, they can just um, go to Facebook.com and search, uh, yeah, search Mad Influence or go to YouTube.com, Twitter, search Mad Influence. You should pull up music fairly, e- fairly easily there. Hey, uh, Adam and James, thanks for doing the show, guys. Ken Webster Jr. with more Pursuit of Happiness Radio coming up right after this. Love.